Hello, I'm Peter Orker of Peter Orker Piano Tuition and welcome to a Tuesday tip for better piano playing. <laughs> well actually, you know, I'm temporarily renaming Tuesday tips to Tuesday tutorials. I've still got the alliteration in there. Up till now I've been focusing on tips and advice which I hope will um, help you to improve your piano playing generally. But over the next few weeks, I'd like to present some tutorials on specific pieces of music, building up to a piano recital. Each Tuesday tutorial will step you through the music in stages, and every video will be um, longer in duration than most of the previous tips videos. So do bear with me. I'm pitching this at um, a fairly advanced level now, in fact approximately grade 7 and above up to diploma level, um, but hopefully anyone watching who is at a slightly lower level of ability uh, and experience will still be able to get some general benefit from it. So let's get cracking. Our recital is going to cover four or can contain uh, four pieces altogether covering Baroque, Classical and Modern genres. We'll start with, today, with Baroque uh, and our piece is Sonata in E Major, Kirkpatrick catalogue number 380 by Domenico Scarlatti. Well, Scarlatti was born the same year as J.S. Bach, 1685. But his music was fundamentally quite different in style from Bach, who, who spent his entire life entirely in, Ger in Germany. Uh, Scarlatti was Italian, uh, born in Naples, and he once worked as musical director at St Peter's in Rome. <laughs> it's quite an important gig. Uh, however, he travelled widely, particularly uh, uh, working in Portugal and eventually settling in Spain. This means the influence of uh, music from these different countries uh, ensured that his keyboard music was incredibly rich and varied. So let's get started with this uh, sonata in E major. Remember that pianos still hadn't been invented in Scarlatti's time, so he would have intended his music for the harpsichord uh, some purists say that Baroque keyboard music should never be played on a modern piano. Uh, it's not authentic. And uh, if it really must, uh, you should adopt a sort of semi-staccato style of playing that tries to emulate the sound of a harpsichord. Uh, and that you should never use the pedal, the sustaining pedal. Well, I can really see where they're coming from, certainly, um, and I do have some sympathy with that view, but in the grand scheme of things, oh, pardon the pun, grand, get it, I think the music can tolerate the inclusion of some delicate and careful pedalling to give some extra resonance, uh, plus some other more pianistic touches, such as crescendos and diminuendos, um, I personally have no problem with that. Um, if that is something you violently disagree with, then stop watching now. <laughs> anyway, most of you, I think, will continue with me. Uh, Scarlatti wrote, would you believe it, 555 sonatas that we know about. Um, but they were not actually in sonata form in the style of Mozart, Haydn or Beethoven or or beyond. Also, they were in single movements. Um, in fact, the word sonata in this period of musical history and context simply means sounded, i.e. played on an instrument, rather than sung. So the, sung, the word for sung was cantata, which means a sung piece of music, as opposed to a sonata, which means something that is sounded on an instrument. Well, this sonata is in two sections. Uh, they're not separate movements, so there's only a very brief pause, 
hardly a pause at all between one section and the, and the next. Uh, but the second section does contain some elements of developing motifs from the first section. So it's kind of like an embryonic development section from the, from the later sonata form movements of the classical period and beyond. Um, okay, so we're going to get started. Um, I'm just basically going to uh, pretend that I've got a pupil next to me. You are my pupil. Uh, and uh, we're just going to go through some stuff. Okay. First of all, the speed indication here is andante comodo, which means in English um, at a comfortable walking pace. So um, it's not it's not correct to play this really really fast <coughs> or really really slow. I'll just give you a flavour of how it sounds. Just play a little bit of the first page, uh, and you'll you'll get to hear the style that we're talking about. basically the end of page one. Now as you can hear at the beginning um, it's quite declamatory. Um, it's sort of saying here I am uh, and uh, sort of listen up. So we need quite a bold start. Um, so begin this forte. <laughs> okay two bars in. And we already need to highlight a couple of issues here. First of all, uh, it's, it's sort of two parts really, and in most editions it's written as if you play the whole of those two bars with one hand, like this. And you can certainly do that, no problem with that at all, and you may prefer to do that. My preferred method is to play the uh, lower part of the um, of here of the three B's in the second bar with the left hand. Now the reason for doing that is uh, that means that you can use stronger fingers of the right hand uh, to do the trills above that. Uh, so there's no danger there of the the trills, which are really, really important, of them sort of kind of being a little bit overshadowed, if you like, by the underneath part. Um, and it just gives you that little bit more flexibility in terms of voicing and in terms of emphasis there. Um, and whenever that sort of thing comes up, I tend to split the hands rather than using one hand for the same thing. Uh, the other issue is in Baroque time trills uh, are not quite like they are in uh, romantic classical or romantic music where you see a trill and you're going you know it's just as fast as possible they, they sound more measured um, and almost more melodic so the trills here are like one two three four yeah <laughs> they're little four note four note ornaments Okay, and they would always start on the upper note of the of the two notes. So it'd be G sharp and F, F sharp. I also do uh, the first two bars forte, and the next two bars piano. One of the joys of playing 
uh, and dangers of playing Baroque music is that very few dynamic markings exist and any that are printed on your music um, are almost certainly written in by an editor. Um, so you don't have to take any notice of them if you don't want to. You can imprint this with your own idea. And this is, and so uh, to, to a certain extent, these are my own ideas. Um, so you can feel free to discard them and play it the way you want to if you, if you wish to do that. Or you can copy my ideas. So I always do that first um, part uh, loud, first two bars loud. And then the second two part, do two bars piano. And then when that's repeated at a lower register in the next two bars. I can do the same. After that, there's a, a, a descending scale passage. You need to know your scale of E major because that's what this is. So there's a B, and then down you come um, with the right hand. <coughs> it's a simple scale of E major. Um, and then that's repeated a low octave. Notice that that last note is taken over by the left hand to give your right hand opportunity to move up um, over an octave to get the next statement of that scale. Um, so that lasts for three bars and what I like to do is the first scale I do legato second more staccato. Never really, really um, uh, crisp staccato. It's kind of this sort of semi-staccato that tries to create a harpsichordish sort of sound. Let's do that bit again. And then I do the third scale back to legato. The next group of notes is um, more melodic really uh, which is right up here notice that it, it seems to get stuck on <laughs> that little idea which we have how many times one two three four times at, at the same pitch and then uh, the next time it's a, a note lower and then the next time a note lower still and then rounds itself off with that little cadence there so to create interest here, I generally tend to do um, a sort of uh, crescendo along there. And remember as well, the harmony changes underneath these. So it doesn't always sound... Uh, I mean, it would be boring if Scarlatti had written... Got, got totally stuck. But what actually happens is underneath that are these changes of harmony which are quite nice. And then on the change of, slight change of melody where it comes down a step, I then play that quietly, or more quietly. straight cadence here. I like to put the trill there. Oops. And again, it's not a 
It's a da 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 da. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight notes. Um, demi semi quavers. So it's um. So let's put that a little bit together. So from the beginning, here we go. sounds a bit like a fanfare but before that there's a really important thing a crotchet rest so often people miss out that crotchet rest and there's a bump of where you always get a bar it sounds like a bar of two four and then it goes back into three four <laughs> um, so get a pencil and draw a nice big circle around that crotchet rest just there so um, our next little section is like a fanfare. First of all, the right hand, then the left hand. Back to the right hand. Now, obviously, it's not literally right hand, left hand, right hand, um, because while the right hand's doing its fanfare, left hand's simply doing. So we've got this. left hand's doing it, the right hand's doing, okay, and then same as before, the right hand does fanfare, left hand does bass notes, okay, so we put that together, we've got this. opportunity for a trill. Uh, just as dynamics uh, aren't usually uh, written in to a, a Baroque period, not all the ornamentation is either. And it's sometimes nice to just improvise a little bit and think, oh, that's a nice opportunity there to put a trill in. So actually I'm going to play that like this. <laughs> Just slow it down. It's basically a scale, but with each note of the scale repeated once. So it's. Um, and in order to make that work, um, it's a good idea to group those in twos. You can hear it going da 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 da. And it's what I call a down-up technique. So you make your, your fingers dive down into the note on the first of the group, or your hand <laughs> dives downwards, and then as you hit the second note of the group, you actually, as, obviously you've got to make the finger go down on the note to make it sound, but as you're doing that, you bring the hand up, like that on that second note. So on the first note, my hand's going down. On the second note, my hand's coming up. So when you put that into the sequence, you can hear that ba-da, 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 ba-da. Um, it 
just gives a little bit more shape to uh, that ascending scale of with each note of the scale is repeated of course um, and then beyond that there's a little bit of a little chill there uh, using three and two fingers three two three two um, then a little bit more melody a bit more scale a bit more trill and then we get that Okay, so let's put all that bit together now. In the left hand, of course, we're just doing crotchets, gradually changing the chord. So put that together. section of the sonata um, it's a sort of variation on the fanfare idea but with a slightly different take on it um, you've got it's basically a cadence a perfect cadence not in the key of E but in the key of B which is the dominant key at the end of the first section it's very common for the music to change key to the dominant key which of course in this case is B so you've got this little fanfare. You can almost hear the brass instruments there, can't you? Especially those two chords are very uh, brass-like uh, and fanfare-like. And then you get interspersed with this uh, some semiquaver passage work. which then finishes the piece off. And I like to do the first of those quite loud. And then echo it. Echoes are very common in Baroque keyboard music, so uh, it's good to sort of pay homage to that <laughs> uh, in our interpretation. Uh, so I go from the last if you like fanfares and then that little bit of passage work, we get this. So, uh, you can see how we can easily break this part of the music, the first section of the music, into sort of little bits that we can then rehearse and practice separately. So you've got the opening declamatory section. And using both hands for those. If you want to, you don't have to. Um, and then you get the scale bit. Then you get that repeating melody with the changing chords underneath. Then you get our fanfare idea. Uh, and so on. And then that scale in, in uh, repeated notes. scale again um, and then the new fanfare idea for the end of the movement at the end of the section and then 
that final cadency bit. <laughs> recommend doing is when you get your music is just get a pencil and just mark in those uh, sections that we've been dealing with separately and take each section as if it was a new as a, as a completely separate piece of music work on it really carefully to get it as fluent uh, and as sort of accurate as you can get it don't be afraid of um, very very slow practice uh, write in as many fingerings as you need to and um, I think hopefully fingers crossed by next week by next Tuesday's tutorial we'll be ready to go on to the second section of this sonata and we can really then begin putting this performance together well Thank you for watching um, and uh, good luck with all that hard work that you've got ahead of you. Um, if you don't have a book of Scarlatti Sonatas, uh, it's very, very easy to find this one um, on uh, IMSLP. Uh, in one of my previous Tuesday tips, look out for, on, on YouTube, uh, on my YouTube channel for that. Uh, you'll f if you'll find a little tutorial on there on how to find music on IMSLP. So just search for it, find the music, um, it, it'll be there, <laughs> uh, and download a nice copy of it. Either put it on your iPad or print it off. Um, or you might be inspired to go off and buy a book of Scarlatti Sonatas. Like I said, there are 555 of them, so they're in different volumes. Uh, so you might need to search for the right volume. Also, there's quite a lot of performances of this work on YouTube, not by me, but by uh, other pianists. And uh, so feel free to search some of those out and have a listen to someone else playing it. It'd be a different interpretation to mine, I'm sure. Maybe slightly different tempo, uh, different emphases, different ornamentation perhaps. Uh, but it'll just give you another um, perspective on interpreting this uh, it's a really nice sonata actually it's, it's lovely to play good luck with all that and I'll look forward to seeing you at the next Tuesday tutorial <laughs> not Tuesday tip Tuesday tips by the way will be coming back but for the next few weeks it's Tuesday tutorial I'll take care thanks for watching and bye for now